When you visit Steepletop, and you should, you enter past a grand circular driveway where people would arrive in open air cars to visit their friend, the poet, Edna St. Vincent Millay, for a weekend in the country, or a month or longer. People wanted to be around Vincent, to absorb her refusal to fit in, to hear her voice deeper than her tiny frame would suggest, to touch and hold her many precious things collected from her travels overseas, to read from her enormous library, to laugh with her, to make her laugh, and to drink with her rare wines and smoky whiskeys. Vincent, as she was called, bought the old blueberry farm in Austerlitz, New York, for $9,000 in 1939, already a rock star of a poet and a bit of a living legend. Born in Maine in 1892, her mother divorced her father when she was still very young and then left Vincent in charge of her other two girls when she went to look for work as a nurse in nearby Newburyport, Massachusetts. Vincent went to Vassar College on her scholarship at 21, where she developed her writing her wardrobe, and her desire, non-gender conforming and extensive as it was. After college, she moved to Greenwich Village. She went to Paris and met Romaine Brooks and Gertrude Stein. She ran the Cherry Lane Theater and starred in plays she wrote herself with the Providence Down Players. She was a pacifist and an activist. She was a lover and a leaver. Her sonnet number four, I shall forget you presently, my dear. So make the most of this, your little day, your little month, your little half a year, ere I forget, or die, or move away, and we are done forever. By and by, I shall forget you, as I said. But now, if you entreat me with your loveliest lie, I will protest you with my favorite vow. I would indeed that love were longer lived and vows were not so brittle as they are. But so it is, and nature has contrived to struggle on without a break thus far. Whether or not we find what we are seeking is idle, biologically speaking. Vincent won the Pulitzer Prize for poetry in 1923, the third woman ever to win the award. She loved deeply and often and wrote prolifically until her death. This is Vincent's writing cabin door. Step inside, breathe in what is at once light and the very heaviest darkness. You can visit it at Steepletop, and you should. It's separate from the main house, which you enter first. You enter into a small room where you stand at the bottom of a steep staircase, low ceilings, wide wooden planks, slate floors, riding boots in the corner. Nothing has been touched or moved since she died. Her sister Norma made sure of that, living there like a ghost herself, touching nothing, moving nothing, not living as much as haunting. Now Vincent died by falling down the stairs where you're standing, only they don't tell you that until the end of the tour. And what they tell you is a great mystery as to how she died. She was a morphine addict. She suffered from depression. She was an alcoholic. She was found eight hours after her death at the bottom of those stairs. At the top, an empty bottle and a wine glass. Mystery solved. Is it possible to live a life so complete, defying categorization, and feel so much that you feel nothing at the very same moment? If you trap your words inside of a display case like tiny seashells, if you close a heavy wooden door on a room of your own and sit beside a wood stove with only language and memory to hold, with an ability to distill to essence every departure, to understand every departure before you've even arrived, you may very well disassociate from every heavy pillowed fainting couch every lacy curtained garden view that you curate and weed yourself. Broadfield, 
bright flower, long white road. My feet to follow, my heart to hold. And no one speaks to me. Can you? No one speaks to me. Old mill, gray shipyard, New England, where winter is king. Weathered faces turn to watch the sea. No one speaks to me. Can you? No one speaks to me. Can you make the most of this, your little day, your little month, your half a year? As you struggle on, vows bend and break. A grave is such a quiet place. I am not big enough to love the way I do. What will you do with me now? Keep me doing things, keep me from doing things. Keep my things out of the way. And don't stay too long. Red hair, green eyes, his stubborn mouth and chin. She said if we did better, he might come back then. But whoever does better, can you? Whoever does. My head a howling wilderness, the creaking of a tented sky. I try to claim you, name you, tame you. You will suffer death, but cannot die. Whoever does better, can you? Whoever does, can you make the most of this? Your little day, your little month, your half a year. As you struggle on, vows bend and break. A grave is such a quiet place. I am not big enough to love the way I do. What will you do with me now? Keep me doing things, keep me from doing things, keep my things out of the way, and don't stay too long. Yeah, yeah. It is a wild. Make the most of this, your little day, your little month, your little half a year. Struggle on, bend and break. The grave is such a quiet place. I am not big enough to love the way I do. What you gonna do with me now? Keep me doing things, keep me from doing things. Keep my things out of the way. No one speaks to me, can you? No one speaks to me, can you? Broad field, bright flower, long white road. My feet to follow, my heart.